You know, in less than a decade, a land once considered hopeless for agriculture has reached an annual aquatic production of nearly 200,000 tons. Not on the coast, not in a river delta, but deep in inland China, thousands of kilometers from the ocean. That place is Xinjiang, a region once called the Dead Sea of Central Asia, which for many years was associated only with sand, wind, and saline soil. Today, it is witnessing an almost unbelievable transformation. Fish and shrimp not only survive there, but are also farmed and harvested right in the heart of the scorching desert, forming what many people call an artificial ocean in the desert. How did China do it? Why is aquaculture able to exist in one of the harshest environments in Asia? All of this will be revealed by Terran Works in this video. There are places on Earth that people once believed could cost you your life simply by setting foot in them. The Taklamakan is one of those places. In the Uyghur language, the name of this desert is often interpreted as once you enter, it is hard to find a way out. A description that reality fully lives up to. Located deep within the Xinjiang region, the Taklamakan covers an area of about 337,000 square kilometers, nearly equivalent to the U.S state of Texas, making it the world's second largest sandy desert. It is not only vast, but also one of the harshest environments on the planet. Daytime temperatures can exceed 50 degrees Celsius, while at night they can drop to near freezing. Average annual rainfall is under 100 millimeters, and in some areas, not a single drop of rain is recorded for years on end. The ground in the Taklamakan is not only arid, but also saline, highly alkaline, and extremely poor in nutrients. Strong winds constantly shift the sand dunes, causing the landscape to change without pause. For most of the 20th century, this place was almost regarded as agriculturally dead, unsuitable for farming, livestock raising, and unthinkable for aquaculture. Yet it was precisely in this land, one that people had avoided for decades, that an unprecedented decision was made to raise marine fish in the middle of the desert. When the first information about the idea of farming marine fish in the Taklamakan Desert was made public, the most common reaction was not curiosity, but skepticism. To many, it seemed like a proposal that ran completely counter to all ecological logic. Quite a few voices argued that Taklamakan could never become anything other than a barren wasteland. Instead of accepting that judgment, Chinese scientists chose a different approach. They did not try to conquer the desert, but began by re-examining its natural structure. Geological surveys revealed that beneath the dry, scorching sands of Xinjiang lie layers of saline and alkaline groundwater with salinity levels close to that of seawater. When this water source is combined and stabilized with meltwater from the Tian Shan Mountains, an environment similar to the ocean can be recreated right in the heart of the desert. Building on these discoveries, the first artificial aquaculture ponds were established in the desert in 2022. Each pond covers an area ranging from several thousand to more than 10,000 square meters, lined with impermeable membranes and operated continuously using pumping systems, aeration, and biological filtration. Hundreds of thousands of juvenile fish and shrimp were released, a high-risk experiment in which even the smallest miscalculation could have wiped out the entire system. Throughout the early stages of the experiment, China made little effort to persuade the world with arguments. There were no grand statements or promises about the future. Instead, they let time and data provide the answer, and it was the results themselves that spoke forcing the scientific community to completely reconsider its initial assumptions. In the aquaculture ponds set up in the Taklamakan Desert, fish survival rates reached around 99 cent, a level rarely seen in large-scale aquaculture. Even in leading countries such as Norway, where coastal salmon farming technology has been optimized for decades, typical survival rates still range only from 60 to 80 percent, depending on environmental conditions and disease. 
After just a few months, juvenile fish in these desert-based systems grew steadily and reached market size, demonstrating that a tightly controlled artificial environment not only allows fish to survive, but also supports efficient growth. From that point on, Taklamakan was no longer seen merely as a desert. It became a living experiment, one in which China demonstrated its ability to turn ideas once dismissed as absurd into measurable reality compelling the world to reconsider the limits of modern aquaculture. The results achieved in the Taklamakan were not a matter of luck, but the outcome of a system calculated down to every variable. The aquaculture ponds in the desert do not operate like conventional fish ponds. They are closed biological units lined with impermeable membranes that completely isolate them from the saline soil below. Pumping, aeration, and biological filtration systems run continuously 24-7, keeping oxygen levels, salinity, and water temperature stable. In an environment where daytime temperatures can exceed 50 degrees Celsius and drop sharply at night, the water in the ponds is still maintained at around 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, thanks to sensors and automated regulation systems. More importantly, over 90% of the water is recycled. Waste and uneaten feed are treated through settling tanks and biological filters before being returned to the ponds. In the desert, where water is more precious than any other resource, this is not merely a technical solution, but a condition for survival. Behind the success of the desert-based aquaculture model lies a price that is far from cheap. According to published figures, over more than a decade of preparation and implementation, high-tech aquaculture in Xinjiang has attracted over USD 5 billion in investment, with about USD 1.6 billion concentrated in just the past two years as the model entered the commercialization phase. However, the high costs are being offset by economic returns. In 2023, aquaculture output in Xinjiang reached approximately 184,000 tons, generating more than USD 530 million in revenue. By 2024, production rose to nearly 196,500 tons, making the region the largest aquaculture center in northwest China. From land once considered worthless, the Taklamakan is gradually giving rise to a food production industry of significant scale with operational efficiency comparable to advanced aquaculture models in Norway. Once water, temperature, and salinity were brought under control, the story in the Taklamakan did not stop at simply raising fish. What is even more remarkable is how the ponds gradually began to function like an artificial ecosystem, where life is sustained not only by machinery, but also by biological links that form over time. Inside the settling tanks and biological filtration units, microorganisms started to take on roles that nature usually performs in the open ocean, breaking down waste, transforming toxic compounds, and stabilizing the water environment. According to project descriptions, more than 500 species of microorganisms can form within the system, helping treat the water while also creating additional natural nutrients that reduce complete dependence on industrial feed. In other words, these are not just fish ponds, but living cycles designed to sustain themselves. And that cycle does not end at the pond's edge. Thanks to the circular model, over 90% of the water is reused, while the nutrient-rich water that has been treated is further directed outward to support agricultural experiments on saline land. When fish can survive in the middle of the desert, the next question is no longer is it possible, but how far can it go? In the Taklamakan, the answer does not stop at aquaculture. The treated water from the fish ponds, instead of being discharged, began to be reused for an even more ambitious experiment. Growing rice on saline alkaline land, known as sea rice. Trials of salt-tolerant rice in Xinjiang have been carried out since 2018 on land once considered impossible to cultivate. In some locations, soil salinity exceeds 1.7%, a level at which conventional rice cannot survive. Yet with salt-tolerant rice varieties combined with nutrient-rich recycled water from the aquaculture systems, the rice plants continued to grow and produce harvests, 
By 2023, the area planted with sea rice in Xinjiang reached about 2,000 hectares, with yields exceeding 8 tons per hectare, comparable to many traditional rice-growing regions. The core significance lies not only in the rice itself, but in how the systems are stacked together. Fish farming supplies water and nutrients. Rice cultivation improves soil structure and reduces salinity, and the entire cycle helps cut dependence on freshwater resources. Through this process, the Taklamakan is transforming into an integrated, scalable model. One in which the desert not only produces food, but also regenerates its own ecological foundation. Yet behind the impressive figures, the integrated cultivation model in the Taklamakan still faces clear limitations. The desert remains an unpredictable environment where rare fluctuations can lead to major consequences. A typical example occurred in Hotan, Hedian, on the southern edge of the Taklamakan, when a localized flash flood following unusually heavy rainfall swept through an aquaculture area, washing away more than 600,000 farmed fish and causing losses of tens of millions of yuan in a very short time. This incident highlights the paradox of the model. Even in one of the driest regions on Earth, water-related risks still exist, and when they occur, their destructive power can overturn even the most carefully calculated technical designs. In addition, pressure on water resources is steadily increasing as agriculture consumes the majority of regional water use, while the Tian Shan glaciers, an important source of supply, are shrinking due to climate change. Finally, there are the issues of high costs and policy dependence. The system requires massive capital investment, strict management, and multiple layers of biological containment to prevent organisms from escaping into the surrounding environment. Taken together, these factors show that Tuklamakan is not an easily replicable formula, but a long-term equation, one in which success depends on the ability to balance technology, resources, and the limits imposed by nature itself. China is not the only country trying to bring the ocean inland. On the other side of the Pacific, the United States is pursuing a similar path. If the Taklamakan demonstrates how China scales up production through infrastructure and ecological control, then in the U.S. the story of recirculating aquaculture begins under a different kind of pressure. The United States is one of the world's largest consumers of seafood, yet it imports about 80 to 85% of the seafood it consumes domestically, with a total value exceeding USD 20 billion each year. For many policymakers, this is not just an economic issue, but a matter of food security. In that context, RAS, land-based recirculating aquaculture systems, are seen as a technological solution. Rather than expanding production spatially as in the Taklamakan, projects in the U.S. are designed as closed-loop biological factories located close to consumer markets to reduce transportation costs and environmental risks. In Florida, Maine, and California, Numerous projects farming salmon, sea bass, and tilapia have been launched, with investment levels ranging from tens to hundreds of millions of dollars per facility. These systems can reuse more than 90% of their water, tightly control disease, and operate completely separated from the natural ocean. Although costs are high and not every project succeeds, RAS in the United States point to a clear trend. Bringing aquaculture onto land is no longer merely an option, but a long-term strategy. If China has proven that this can be done in the desert, the United States is now trying to prove that it can operate as a modern industrial sector. RAS for fish, despite being a breakthrough technology, is still not the greatest challenge in land-based aquaculture. The real test emerges when humans decide to farm shrimp, a species known for its extreme sensitivity to water quality and microbial balance. It is precisely this high level of risk that makes land-based shrimp farming the ultimate trial of technological control. Over the past decade, projects in Florida, Texas, and the Midwest have demonstrated that shrimp can be raised thousands of kilometers away from the sea in closed-loop systems operating like biological factories. These farms reuse up to 90 to 95 percent of their water maintain strict control over salinity, temperature, and microbial communities, and nearly eliminate the risk of disease originating from the marine environment. 
From the Taklamakan to Florida, from arid deserts to closed-loop biological factories, aquaculture is entering a new era, one in which the ocean is no longer confined by the coastline. What is unfolding in Xinjiang makes one thing clear. When technology becomes precise enough and ecosystems are designed correctly, even lands once considered hopeless can be transformed into large-scale sources of food. The final question is no longer whether humans can farm seafood away from the sea, but rather how we will redefine the ocean in the 21st century. What do you think about the future of these oceans on land? Share your perspective, and don't forget to join Terran Works on the journeys ahead.